Moi, je, voulais, euh, je suis sur la chemin pour rentrer en Europe pour vivre bien comme les autres. Parce qu'on a la mort. Pour, pour bien, pour garder pour un avenir pour moi et pour ma famille comme ça. On n'a rien comme avenir. An environmental refugee has to leave. Has no options whatsoever to remain in the area where he or she is coming from because of lack of opportunities, lack of viable uh, environmental and ecological services. This is a slow onset disaster which is unfortunately going quite unnoticed because it takes place in areas where there is no cameras, no journalists. We may see the effects of it when people move and come to our doorsteps. There's a profound human fear, even terror, of destroying the human habitat with our own technology, by our own hand, and to no purpose. And that kind of fear enters into religious areas because we now know that we can do what in the past only God could do, destroy the world. And I think that causes a mixture of fear and guilt in human beings, even though it can be confused and uh, not entirely clear or conscious, it's there. Nothing that we do in the world is entirely free of it. It's a shadow underneath everything. When we wake up in the morning, we are a little bit without the ordinary defenses that we need to function in the world. And then we sit down at the breakfast table, and there we are confronted with all the catastrophes of the world. And that would be too much for us to handle if we didn't have some kind of defense. When we get a very threatening information, we do deny it. We, we um, put it aside. And even, even if we hear the information, and even if we can sort of believe the information, we still um, manage to suppress it in some way into our own consciousness. People are not reacting very well to scare tactics. So these doomsday sort of scenarios that they hear, they find so threatening that they don't want to take it in. If this information arouses too much anxiety inside, that's when these defense mechanisms come into play. And 
we mustn't forget that they are survival mechanisms. Originally, they are really there to help people not to be flooded by anxiety. Picture how you increase the pressure on yourself by stewing in worry and fear. Let the world take care of its own worries. You'll help yourself most by concentrating on your own affairs. So scare tactics generally don't work. People push that kind of information back. And they can also rationalize it. For instance, saying, well, these, these scientists say this, but there are other scientists who say, I don't have to worry because science will, you know, develop and they will take care of it. So I don't have to worry about it anyway. Science must have some answer to a problem as important as this. Relax, relax. As soon as the public sees, on the one hand, this scientist says, on the other hand, another scientist says, the public sort of shrugs and they say, come back and tell us what you know when you know what you're talking about. People will often gravitate toward what sounds like better news. Remember these simple rules to keep relaxed. Keep relaxing. Keep relaxing. Do these things to untense. And we will approach each day with a better outlook. Poised. Relaxed. That's the way to let yourself go. takes a crisis for action, for people to actually start to do something seriously. Uh, if you look at the acid rain debate, the action only began when it was possible to show on the front of magazines that trees were dying in Germany, that lakes were suffering in the northern latitudes, Scandinavia, Canada. The same for the ozone hole. It, the action really began when people saw pictures on their television of the ozone hole um, and then further data that showed that this wasn't just happening in the Antarctic, it was happening elsewhere. What does it take then for climate change? How bad does it have to get uh, for action to, to begin to be taken seriously?